I think for most parents, that's that's what it comes down to. I think we've got um, a lot of safety concerns now about our children. You know, before we we as children would have done a lot of free ranging out there in parks, and and there's a lot of worry now about the safety. You know, the the physical safety, the personal safety of our children. So, age and and those sorts of factors, I think, weigh heavy on parents' minds. So, it, what age is okay? Is there an age that that you think it's acceptable? Mm, well, I think. Every family will know their child. For some children, it's going to be well into their teens. You know, you've got children who are probably still wetting the bed right into their primary school years, and that's a difficult thing to send that child. So it does come down to the child. It comes down to how well you know the family you're sending your child to. That's a really big factor. Is that the key, do you think? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I think that's a really important consideration for every parent is how well do you know the family where you're sending your child you know that's you you wouldn't kind of take off your your most important jewelry and uh, just leave it anywhere so you wouldn't do that with your children either it's a great analogy so how is it okay to then have rules and and if you are deciding okay I'm going to send my eight-year-old to this uh, birthday sleepover I know the families well um is it still okay for you to uh, insist on some rules for the family that your child is sleeping over and, and maybe what are the do's and don'ts? Mm. Well, you know, that's kind of a difficult thing to impose on another family, isn't it? Especially if your values and their values are distinctly different. I think all you can do is come down to managing your own child as opposed to managing the own family. So, for example, things like children are going to get changed into jammies. So you want to have some rules around that. What What's safe behaviour around that? How are you going to do it? And, you know, in the early years, we've got little girls and little boys usually sleep, sleeping separately in, in, in separate, you know, parties. So that that's all right. But I would say you really have to uh, talk very carefully to your child about their own protective behaviours. And that's, for most of us, as far as we can go, we can check with other families about what their provisions around safety are. Yeah, and and, and it's t- telling the child, you know, when you get changed into your PJs, you do it on your own in a separate room, those kind of things. If you are having a shower there, you do that on your own. I mean, is it those kind of things, you know? Yeah. You're only mm. allowed in your bed by yourself. I yep. mean, because these are the things that cause parents' anxiety, isn't it? Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you a little story about one of my boys. He went on a sleepover. This wasn't even that long ago. And my husband and I are not shift workers, so we don't go out. I mean, I work parent seminars at night. But um, he had gone to a family and the dad was a shift worker. And uh, so he had no frame of reference for this. Came home, said, I'm never sleeping there again. Why not? He said, I think the dad's a cat burglar. Oh. <laughs> Oh. And and I said we got to the bottom of it because he'd read in a book. Of course, you know people who adults who go out at night have to be cat burglars. So that caused him anxiety. So I don't think we can pick what our kids are going to be anxious about. We've just got to do some broad coverage of safety and other issues, and then you know hope for the best and be prepared to pick them up at one in the morning. A couple of texts coming through. This one from uh, Mum: <laughs> Blanket rule, no sleepover before eleventh birthday. No exceptions. It's killing my youngest. She has three hundred and seventy-six <laughs> days until she turns this magical number. I am so mean. Not. Is it okay to say no? And is that mother being unreasonable? Because I suspect a lot of. Correct me, Mum, if I'm wrong, but I wonder if that child's friends are allowed to have the sleepovers. Yeah. We're going to have the same discussions about social media, aren't we? Yes. Some families will allow it when children are little. Some families will make them wait until they're 13. And it's the same with sleepovers. It's what works for you and your family. There's no right or wrong. Good on you. If you've got that rule in your family and you stick to it, well done. And it's great resilience training for kids. Well, so how does a child handle it? If if you, your child is the only one that's not allowed to go to that sleepover, that child's going to probably cop a bit of flack at school. How do they handle it? Well, again, it's, it's rules in our family. Like, you know, other kids get to jump on couches in their homes. We don't in our home. It's different strokes for different folks. And at some point, you're just going to have to say no to your kid and be all right with it. And they're going to have to be all right with it as well.
This one, uh, who wants to remain anonymous, and, and, it, and this is an interesting one. I agreed for my 10-year-old daughter to have a sleepover at a friend's house. I knew and trusted the parent. When my husband dropped my daughter to the sleepover, he discovered that the older brother in the house was also having friends to stay, and I never anticipated that my 10-year-old daughter would be at a sleepover with half a dozen 13-year-old boys. I had to call the mother and chat this through, and it really was a difficult conversation. She assured me the boys were in separate section of the house, and all was fine but it was a really tricky and uncomfortable situation to be in and it changed the friendship I had with the mother mm. yeah that is tricky that is tricky and, and I would have found that concerning my heart goes out to that mum you know you're you're providing your most precious resource to another family to look after and those those variables that come in that you haven't accounted for in your own thinking as a parent you haven't prepared your child for it Mm, that's that's tough. That is yeah. tough. It would change a friendship. Yeah. Claire Orange is my guest. She is a parent educator. We are talking about the dreaded sleepover, which uh, I'm sure causes many arguments in many families. And I have uh, an 8 and 10-year-old and they are allowed to do sleepovers with families that we know very well. I have also had situations where I've had a couple in my daughter's room and a couple in my son's room, but they are all siblings. Yes. So I felt, as did the parents, quite comfortable that there were brothers and sisters in one and brothers and from three families in the other. And I was okay with that. When I have had just some girls over, my husband won't go up there. He's like, um, I don't want to risk anything in this day and age. Not, you know, not that there is any risk in our house, but plays it safe, as, as I know others do, and say, you know what, if they're needing to go and get dressed and get organised and get themselves organised the next morning, you go up, I'm staying down here, I'll cook them breakfast. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that is probably quite a common thing oh, in most houses. It's a very common thing and it's a good protective behaviour in a family is not to put, put anyone at risk, you know, older siblings as well. So, you know, when we've had younger, younger children come over and sleep, I always do that, letting other people know that I, I generally have quite a lot of children in my house um, and that there might be sleepovers happening at the same time but it's that, that forewarning, mm. isn't it? And, and the protective stuff around a partner, that's, it's an important consideration. You know, in, in my home, I've, I've got boys and lots of boys sleeping over. I don't have mixed gender children, so it probably makes it easier for me. Um, but certainly I, I really respect that your husband would find that very concerning. Yeah, as I'm sure many would. Yeah. Uh, another interesting text coming through, Phil from Mandra. Thank you, Phil. Ooh, we let our daughter at 14 have a sleepover. Unbeknown to us was that her friend had told her mother that she was sleeping over at our house. We dropped them off at the cinema thinking the other parents were picking them up. Police rang us at 1, 1.30am to say they had both girls at the police station found near the skate park trying to hide in bushes, grounded for a year. Well, look, I, I really hope my Phil. parents aren't listening. <laughs> You didn't, did you? I might did have. Did you? I might have. I might have done that once and then scared myself terribly. Teenagers are about risk-taking. That's what they do. And, and Phil, you've done a good job coming down hard and having a really good consequence for it. But you know what? She would have scared herself inside out anyway. She's done her own natural learning. But uh, I'd say there's lots of teens who do do those sorts of things. Yeah. Are we over-parenting these days? And... Um, Children aren't seeing as much. Neil's asking that on the text. In some contexts, yes. I mean, I think there's a lot more awareness about the things that can go wrong. There's a lot more parenting hysteria. There's a lot more parenting shaming, if you get it wrong, out there because it can be shared on social media. All these terrible experiences can get shared. So I think parents feel under an enormous amount of pressure to get it right, and most parents will get it right in their own family for their own children. Is there something healthy about allowing a child, though, to have a sleepover with oh. friends, just in regard to independence, responsibility, respect? Is, yeah. is there some benefits there? Yeah, and so much well-knowledge. You know, what happens in your home and what happens in my home 
are completely different. So for children to learn that and start to learn that other people do things differently in life, what a wonderful thing. Cultures and family practices. My boys have brought some fantastic things home from other people's houses and it's rich learning for our family too and great for them. So much fun. So exciting. Another another text and another um, the downside of a sleepover. Absolutely loathe the sleepover culture. It creates so much drama, exhaustion and inevitably never really a good time. We're about to implement a blanket ban. Not popular but sleepovers are so unnecessary. Kids can play until a little bit later and then um, be picked up. Uh, now, th- that's interesting because the next day is actually quite revolting oh. for the parent because they go to bed really late, they wake up really, really early and uh, as happened to my children earlier in the week, I had a great sleepover, a very good friend, but boy, were they nightmares the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that that's not fun for a parent. Sometimes sleepovers aren't fun for parents. You know, I know um, lots of parents who don't allow sleepovers because it's not particularly much fun for the parent. You're up there moaning and groaning until all hours to get them to go to sleep. You know, they're going to be revolting. <laughs> you say, right, five more minutes of talking time and that's it. <laughs> I know. And then they're going to whispering. Uh, another interesting text, and, and thank you for your texts, uh, uh, folks. Granted, there is no right or wrong, wrong, but to many helicopter parents wanting to control everything, obviously safety is always paramount, but some people need to trust their kids. If they abuse that trust, then consequences occur, grounding, etc. regards Terry. Good point. Yeah, great point, great point. And, you know, the older our kids get, the more we can get into treating them as good young adults who can make good decisions, hopefully.